Hi folks, I'm Raz and today's lesson is on Pearson Test of English PD Academic Speaking Task Question 4 Retail Lecture. So let's get started. Retail lecture comes under the speaking task during PT exam. This type of question will test your listening as well as your speaking skills. Here you can take a look at my score report where I scored 74 points, which is equal to 7.5 bands in IELTS. So I'm going to share the tips and tricks to help you score a good band. Now, the way we convert the PD score to IELTS score is that if you score 86 and above, it's a nine man. Scoring between 83 to 85 is 8.5 band, 79 to 82 is eight, 73 to 78 is 7.5 band, and the list goes on. In PT speaking, there are five tasks total between 27 to 43 minutes. Task one is read aloud. Task two is repeat sentence. Task three is describe image. Task four is retail lecture. And task five is answer a short question. And friends, today's lesson and all on task four, retail lecture. Let's take a look at the duration. The audio length is up to 90 seconds, and you can see here retail lecture starts 10 seconds after lecture. Total time you need to answer is within 40 seconds, and you get three to four different tasks. Now the tests, listening and speaking skills, audio length is up to 90 seconds, and you need to answer in 40 seconds. 10 seconds is given to prepare before the recorder starts. You must speak for at least 38 seconds and complete your answer with key highlights from the lecture. You must finish speaking before the progress bar reaches the end. Do remember that if you're silent for more than three seconds, the recorder stops recording your voice. Now the PT Academic will be judged on three different categories. The first is content. Make sure you include numbers, dates, and important points. Second is oral fluency. Oral fluency is scored by determining if your rhythm, phrasing, and stress is smooth. And pronunciation. So make sure you speak clearly and in natural tone. Moving on to the tips and strategy, the first one is mind mapping. You'll be given an erasable board and marker to note down different points for the retail lecture as the audio plays. Try to write as much information as you can. If possible, jot down dates, places, numbers, which are important to increase the score of content. You can also use the symbol to remember. Example, use down arrow to show the decrease in quantity or use initially for the long words. Now let's take a look at a few templates to speak clearly and up to the point. You must be ready with the template. The template will help you to achieve the maximum marks and avoid any mistakes on the exam day. So the first template is that you can start by saying the speaker was discussing, he or she added, talk about the first key point, he or she mentioned, second key point, he or she discussed, key point three, and finally suggested that key point four. Now, the next template talks about the speaker provides the brief information about dash, first of all, talk about the first key point, secondly, talk about second key point, move on to the next key point, and in crux is like conclusion. Template three, the lecture describes the information about dash to begin with, talk about the first key point in addition to this talk about the next key point, lastly, then conclude. So remember, the most important thing that you should be keeping in mind is grammar. Use appropriate filters and proper sentence structure. Now, the last template is 
The main idea of the lecture was about the impacts of main topic. First and foremost, the speaker was discussing phrase one. He then talked about phrase two and three. Finally, he mentioned phrase four and five, if there is any. Overall, it can be concluded that this lecture is having crucial information about the topic, is strongly supported by important facts and figures, and have great impact on the main topic. So you can make changes as per your convenience and add or delete points. So friends, let's take a look at the PT exam question. The first one is on Asia, importance to Australia's economy. Now here, let's take a look at the lecture. Thanks for this opportunity to speak about Australia's engagement with Asia from the perspective of trade and in particular to say a few words about what Australia is doing in this space. And I'm particularly pleased to be addressing trade and investment, not just of course, because these two things are inextricably linked. But also, of course, because Australia reports to Australia's first ever Minister for Trade and Investment. Asia's importance to Australia's economy is growing by the day. It is one of the most important factors to consider when assessing the international conditions for our national prosperity. Asian demand for our exports has helped Australia manage the global financial crisis better than most other developed economies. In fact, probably better than all other developed economies, investment from Asia has added to the productive capacity of the economy and overall productivity. In 2013, seven of our top 10 export markets were in Asia and represented 65% of our total exports. Asian markets and Australia's geographic proximity are critical not just for our trade ties and our capacity to access important global supply chains, but also to the level of foreign investment in Australia. All right, so now it's time for us to do the mind mapping. So you need to be making key points like Asia, important Australia economy. Demand, Australia, expose, survive global financial crisis. Investment from Asia add to Australia overall productivity. 2013, 7 of 10 Expo Asia contributed 65% total Expo. Asian markets and Australian geographical reggie, important trade ties between both count. Now let's take a look at the response. Asia is becoming quite important for Australia's economy day by day. Asia's demand for Australian exports has helped Australia to survive the global financial crisis in a far better way than any other country in the world. Investment from Asia has added to the overall productivity of Australia. In 2013, 7 out of 10 exports were in Asia, which contributed to 65% of the total exports. Asian markets and Australian geographic region are important for the trade ties between both countries. Moving on to the second question on air pollution. In today's lecture, I'm going to talk about changes in air pollution since the middle of the last century and what has created these changes. So, um, by the 1950s, air pollution was very visible with frequent thick black fogs known as smogs in many large cities around the world. The main source of this pollution was from factories and it caused severe health problems. For example, a particularly severe smog in London in 1952 caused over 4,000 deaths. Obviously, something has to be done and in 1956 a Clean Air Act was introduced in Britain. This addressed the pollution from factories and the smog soon disappeared. However, as you know, these days air pollution is still a big issue. The main difference between now and the 1950s is that you can't see it, it's invisible. 
Also, the main source of pollution now is from cars and lorries, and although these don't produce visible signs, this air pollution is still a significant risk to health. And one of the key factors in the rise of this type of pollution is that we have all become much more vehicle dependent. There are far more cars and lorries, trains, planes than in 1950s, and this is now the main source of air pollution around the world. All right, so it's time to do mind mapping. Air pollution changes middle of last century. Pollution visible in 1950, thick black smog, severe health issues. Air pollution in factories, smog in London 1952, lot of deaths result in Clean Air Act. Now air pollution invisible yet major risk. Now caused by cars, lorries, increase in vehicles in 1950. So let's take a look at the response. The lecture was about air pollution and the changes since the middle of the last century. Air pollution in the 1950s was very visible with thick black smogs causing severe health issues. This air pollution came from factories. A smog in London in 1952 caused a large number of deaths and resulted in a Clean Air Act being introduced. These days, air pollution is invisible but is still a major health risk. It is now largely caused by cars and lorries and is due to the significant increase in vehicles since 1950s. So thank you so much friends for watching this video and keep watching more PTE videos and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.